All right guys, today we're gonna to be working on my 87 F-150. The TPS does need to be changed and my idle needs to be reset. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in today's video. Now, if you have a failing TPS, some symptoms that could be occurring is that your idle is not sitting right, that it's surging, that it stalls, or you have poor acceleration, or in some cases that your check engine light comes on intermittently, but you don't get a code for it. So these could be some of the signs that you need to change your TPS and I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Let's get to it. So unless you got a brand new throttle body or you got a used one and you don't know whether the idle is set correct or if your idle is out of range because somebody has messed with the idle screw on this truck, you may not even need to actually do this step. So you can go ahead and skip this if you do not need to set your idle. The vehicle is at operating temperature. We need to actually run the vehicle and what we need to do is disconnect the idle air controller. What we're checking for is to make sure that the engine can run whenever the idle air controller is disconnected. Once it's disconnected, the engine should run at a very low RPM, but it should still stay on. If the engine quits on you, you need to turn the idle screw one full turn, and then you need to try again. Making just a simple flat head screwdriver to the connector, just to pry it open just a little bit. And the engine still runs whenever it unplugs. It's just at such a very low RPM, but the engine should not die. If the engine does die, you need to turn this bolt in by one full turn. That means one full revolution around, not a half a turn. Now you need to go ahead and let the engine cool down because whenever you go to take the throttle body off of there, the throttle body actually has coolant lines running through it. That means that the coolant that you just got the operating temperature is still going to be inside that throttle body and you're probably going to burn yourself if you don't let it cool down. All right, the first thing that you got to do in order to take the TPS off the throttle body is obviously to get the throttle body off since the TPS sits on the bottom side of the throttle body. So in order to get to it, you got to take the throttle body off, which includes taking off the coolant line up top. There's also a coolant line down below. You got to take the intake hoses off and you also have to make sure you go ahead and disconnect the idle air controller along with the throttle cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the intake hoses here with just an eight millimeter. Set them off to the side here behind the radiator hose. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the throttle cable. I'm just gonna take a flathead screwdriver underneath it and just gently pry it off of that uh, nipple there. Forgot to mention that if you still have your EVAP lines on here, you may need to take them off of here because I don't know if it's actually gonna be able to bend around where you're gonna be setting your throttle body. Just something to keep in mind. My EVAP does not work. That's why I have mine plugged off. So grabbing a 3-8 socket, I'm going to go ahead and take off some bolts. Now you can go ahead and pivot the throttle body just up and out of the way here. Making sure that you're not damaging the idle air controller over here or any of the coolant lines as you try to tip it over. Now you can go ahead and grab your TPS connector here. As you see, it has two slots in it that you're going to have to actually pry up in order to get it off so typically i push up one give a little bit of tension on it and then go ahead and pop the other one with my finger and it typically slides apart pretty easy so with the throttle body up in the air like this i can go ahead and get to the tps which is down here on the bottom it has two phillips heads in it so if you haven't taken yours out in a while it's probably going to be pretty hard to get yours out so you might want to try to spray some uh, pb or wd-40 or even give it a couple of little taps on there to try to loosen them up I just now put mine back on there because I just cleaned my throttle body, so I should be able to just get mine off fairly easy. Then the TPS should be able to come off of there, just like that. So now we can go ahead and grab our brand new TPS. I went ahead and bought one from Motorcraft. There's the part number if you need it. And according to the Ford Performance paper, what you have to do once you get this on here is actually try to set the TPS in range. It's not actually like a plug and play where you actually just set it on there and the computer knows. It probably does learn, but I'm gonna go ahead and follow the Ford Performance procedure for this setup. So what you wanna do first is make sure that the surface where the TPS sit is very clean. You wanna make sure that the little tab down here that actually tells the TPS sensor where the throttle plates are it's all nice and clean and that there's no debris in it because it probably could give you an incorrect reading. Just make sure that all this is cleaned out and the surface where it sits is nice and clean. Now you can go ahead and take your brand new sensor and your two bolts and go ahead and just install it on here, but don't actually tighten the bolts down. So now what we want to do is go ahead and actually plug the TPS in and turn the key so we can read the voltage reading from the TPS. 
Going to the TPS, you should have the three wires. You have an orange one, you have a green one, and you have a black one. Some years may have a different one, so just make sure that you're checking the right one according to that Ford Performance paper. For my case, I'm going to have to go ahead and probe the green wire and the black wire, which the black should be ground, so I can just check it here at the battery. But I need to check and make sure that the voltage is at 0.96 to 0.98. If I cannot get that, what I have to do is actually take the TPS off and drill the mounting holes out just a little bit so I can actually maneuver the sensor whenever I'm putting it down to make sure that it's in range. So I've got the TPS plugged in. I've also got the prongs to my multimeter, one to the battery and one to the green wire. And what I'm gonna do actually, since the ignition is on and it's kind of hard to get this in here is I'm gonna kind of force this in here so I can get my reading here. And as you can see, mine's at 0 0.78, 0 0.77 there. It's going to move because I don't have the bolts actually tightened down all the way. So what we're aiming for is 0.96 to 0.98. The way that we can get that, or at least that we're trying to get it, is that we need to go to the bottom and make sure that your throttle body is all the way closed and go to the bottom while holding this prong here. And what you want to do is measure it whenever you're twisting that uh, TPS back and forth. You're trying to see if you can get that range where the mounting holes are at. If you cannot get that range, you're probably going to have to drill them out. So since I couldn't get my TPS in range, I'm going to have to actually drill mine out. I can only get mine to sit at about 0.88 whenever I actually had the bolts tightened down just a little bit to where I could move it just enough. So I'm going to have to drill mine out just a little bit. So I'm going to try to pick a drill bit that's just barely bigger than the mounting holes. And also make sure that whenever you're putting this in a vise or whatever you're going to use, do not crimp down very hard on this. This does not need to be crushed and you to break it before you actually install it on your truck. Alright, now that the holes are drilled out, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the truck and make sure I can get it in range. With the holes drilled out, I've got the throttle body sitting here. The butterflies are completely closed. I have the lead inside the sensor. And as you can see, I'm at 0.96, which is right where the range should be. So, I'm going to go ahead and double check the bolts that are on the TPS. Make sure that they're tight and go ahead and start putting this thing back together. But also, inside that Ford Performance paper, it almost talks like you're supposed to do this while the engine is running. Clearly, as you see from this job, it's pretty hard to do while it's running. That's why I'm doing this procedure while the engine is off. It seems to work the same way. But now, after you've already got this set, you've checked your sensor, what you need to do is go ahead and disconnect your battery so you can go ahead and reset the computer. You have to let it sit there for at least 15 to 20 minutes, so by the time that you're putting this throttle body back on there, it's probably going to be close to that time anyways. Alright, now we can go ahead and start putting the throttle body back on. I've got a new paper gasket here, which is actually the one I took off, but it's practically brand new. Just make sure that your throttle body surface is all nice and clean of all gasket material, along with your intake. And you can go ahead and start putting this back together. Then torque down the bolts for the throttle body to about 16 pounds. Then we can go ahead and install the simple things like the throttle cable. It snaps into place like that. You can go ahead and plug in your idle air controller connector. Just like so. Just make sure that your uh, connector for your TPS is actually still connected and out of the way of the belt system. And if you still have your EVAP lines, just make sure that you have those connected and also routed the correct way and out of the way of the fan system. Now with everything back together, just make sure you double check everything, such as your throttle cable, make sure that that's connected. Check all your uh, electrical connections, like uh, the one for your TPS, the one for your idle air controller over there. And if you went ahead and drained your coolant, go ahead and make sure you top off your coolant and bleed the system after you get the engine started. But it's time to go ahead and connect the battery and try her out and see what she does. So that about wraps up this video, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them below, and if you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe.